Okay, thanks, uh, Sandeep. So, uh, just uh, kicking off the pre-lunch uh, session on Montagia fractures. So, there's a fracture of the ulna with a dislocation of the radial head. It constitutes about 1% of all forearm injuries and uh, peak uh, age incidence is between 4 and 10 years. Um, Beto uh, actually classified these uh, in, about in uh, 1967 and he uh, described as four types based on the direction of the radial head dislocation. And we look at them a little more, uh, more in detail. So the type 1, there's an anterior dislocation of the radial head with a fracture of the ulnar diaphysis. It's the most common variant in children and constitutes about 70 to 75 percent of all these uh, injuries. Mechanism of injury is fall on the outstretched hand in a position of pronation and in pronation actually the ligaments in the proximal radius become uh, lax so the uh, violent contraction of the biceps will pull the radial head out and uh, all the load then gets transferred onto the ulnar shaft which then freak, uh, breaks in tension uh, on the anterior side. Uh, now, Beto type 2 injuries are uh, fairly uncommon in children, more uh, adult fracture pattern. The fracture in the ulna is metaphyseal or proximal diaphyseal and uh, the radial head dislocates posteriorly. And this uh, results from a fall on about a 60 degree flexed elbow. There's a longitudinal uh, force which either dislocates the elbow or causes the ulna to fail in the uh, metaphyseal region. Now, Beto type 3 injuries uh, more commonly seen in children in about 20%. There's a proximal ulna metaphyseal fracture and anterolateral radial head dislocation is the second most uh, uh, common variant. Uh, there's a risk of posterior interosseous nerve injuries in about 10% of these. And uh, the mechanism of injury is uh, fall on the uh, hyperextended elbow and there's a wear strain which causes the ulna to fail in tension on the uh, radial side. Now, Beto type 4 injuries, again uh, rare in children, uh, there's a fracture of the ulnar uh, and radial diaphysis. The radial uh, fracture is at the level or below the ulnar fracture and there's anterior dislocation of the radial head. So, uh, these are commonly missed injuries and uh, we need to know that the longitudinal axis of radius should pass through the capitulum in any position of the elbow. Uh, so we don't want to miss these and uh, Lincoln and Mubarak have described the ulnar bow sign and uh, they uh, state that if you draw a straight line from the uh, connecting the metaphyseal region in the proximal and the distal ulna then the diaphysis should not deviate uh, from that line for more than 0 0.01 millimeters. Uh, if it does then you uh, have to suspect uh, Montagia fracture. So, a uh, modification of Beto classification was uh, proposed by Letts. They actually uh, divided the type 1 uh, Beto into three types. There's a plastic deformation, a green stick fracture and complete fracture. The rest two uh, subtypes were similar to that in the Beto. And uh, Jupiter subclassified type uh, 2, the, the posterior lesions. Uh, these are more in adults. So, depending on where the ulnar fracture was and how much was the comminution, he divided into four subtypes. So then there are Montagia equivalent lesions which are uh, uh, fracture patterns caused by similar mechanism of injury. Uh, you could have an anterior uh, dislocation radial head with plastic deformation of the ulna, uh, fracture of the ulnar shaft and uh, fracture radial neck, uh, fracture ulnar shaft with proximal fracture uh, shaft uh, radius, uh, fracture of the proximal metaphysis uh, of ulna with anterior dislocation, fracture of shaft of ulna with olecranon and anterior dislocation, and uh, fracture of proximal ulna and uh, neck of uh, radius. And then you have the posterior dislocation of radial head and uh, ulnar metaphyseal fractures. There are also uh, variants for type 2 which is the posterior dislocation of the elbow. In type 3 variant is a fracture with the lateral uh, condyle and type 4 uh, variant which has associated uh, distal humerus fracture. So we need to differentiate these from congenital radial head dislocation uh, and I think the most uh, easy differential factor is the uh, fact that the uh, radial head is convex in these uh, in contrast to the concave uh, appearance in the normal um, uh, child. And the capitulum may be flattened or dysplastic. Uh, in addition, they can be, uh, they're usually bilateral. And if you do an arthrogram, you'll find that the radial head is intracapsular in these uh, congenital dislocations in contrast to the um, uh, Montagias. So uh, again congenital radio ulnar stenostosis, uh, the radial head is not in line with the capitulum so you can confuse these two. They are uh, often bilateral maybe with or without the dislocation and forearm rotation is of course absent. Uh, radius and ulnar are fused for a variable distance and uh, a syndromic association can be found about, found about th uh, one third of these cases. So I think I'm going to end here and uh, pass it on to the next speaker.